Welcome to Firebase release notes for February. Now we have six big and small releases to cover today, so let's dig in right away. First up, we have made multiple updates to Firebase Test Lab, our service that lets you test your app on devices in our lab. You often auto create test runs for Test Lab from within your CI pipelines, which then generates an ID for each test run, like we see in the first column here. Now, to make it easier to find test runs later, you can now give them a custom label in the Firebase console and the G Cloud CLI, which we see in the second column. You can run your tests on many device models with TestLab, but some of those models may be in limited supply, while for others, we may have thousands available. We now measure the available device count, convert that into a label, and then show it in the Firebase console and the G Cloud CLI. We also updated our x86 Android virtual devices to API level 30, and we added iOS 16.2 devices to the catalog. For more information on all of the releases, check the links in the description. By using Crashlytics, you get a prioritized view of the issues that your real users experience. Crashlytics groups the crashes based on their stack trace and other characteristics, and then sorts the resulting issues on the number of times that they have occurred. But you can now also have Crashlytics sort the issues based on the number of users that are affected, making it easy for you to focus on the issues that affect most of your users. And speaking of Crashlytics, you probably know that it depends on symbol files that are generated when you build your app to show readable stack traces for crashes. But it's so easy to forget to update the symbol files to Crashlytics and end up with stack traces that look like this. Our CLI for Flutter developers now has new options to tell it to upload the symbols file for your iOS and macOS apps to Crashlytics automatically during the build. This integrates into the Xcode build pipeline for those apps, which means that you get symbolicated stack traces in the Crashlytics console for every build of your Flutter app. The feature is still under development, though, so if you find any issues with it, let the team know by posting on the GitHub repo. In October, we launched support for count queries on Firestore. That means that you can now retrieve just the count of the number of documents in a collection or for a query without having to retrieve the actual data. This feature was already available on most of our SDKs, but we also just added it to our SDK for Python developers. So upgrade today to use count queries in Python 2. Maintaining your own code to map data from and to the database is labor-intensive and error-prone. For example, say that you store books in Firestore documents like we do here, and that you want to read that data into your iOS app. In regular Swift code, that would look like this. And sure, it's not horribly complex, but there's quite a lot of boilerplates, and the field names are hard to spot in there. Our SDKs for Firestore on Apple platforms also support reading and writing so-called codables, which cleans up the code to this. And the entire mapping is now nicely isolated in that first codable struct up there. We're so confident that this is a better way to map data that we added this to our documentation in a page called Map Cloud Firestore Data with Swift Codable that I link below. The Firebase Authentication SDKs make it easy to add sign in directly to your client side apps with handy utility functions like this one. This API returns a status code that indicates whether the email addresses exist within your project or not. But that unfortunately also means that malicious users can call the API repeatedly to try and find the email addresses of your users. And that is known as an email enumeration attack. You can now set up protection against such attacks on your project. With the protection on, the API no longer returns information that is useful for such attackers. Check the documentation that I linked for full details and instructions on how to set up protection against email enumeration attacks. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. Now, my name is Frank Orpuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.